Uh, again, thank you everyone for attending this uh, session. I hope the coming 30 minutes, I hope they are 30 minutes, but I hope that uh, they will be inspiring for you one way or another. And uh, Dr. Iman, thank you very much for the introduction. Let me share the, the story quickly. It all started um, after my graduation from the Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, I remember I always had the passion of training and development. And this is why I had my, uh, my trainer certification uh, as soon as I graduated. And I started working as a soft skills trainer. But then I always had passion about guiding people. So I had my very first certification um, as a career development coach. And it was part of my master's degree um, majored in international career management. And that was back in um, 2010. And then after three years, I had uh, another certification, which is uh, the, the GCDF or the Global Career Development Facilitator. Uh, where I can assist people with the career development uh, decisions uh, in a global perspective. And of course, I had the privilege to, be, uh, to work as a lecturer of management and leadership in one of the, of the universities for uh, faculties of pharmacy and dentistry here in, in Egypt. And since then, I always had the passion of assisting students. And I believe this is the exact reason why um, the esteemed faculty members attending the seminar are here uh, for. <clears throat> and recently in 2018, I got my certification as an instructor because I wanted to expand the ripple effect, which is um, get more facilitators to the world and accordingly get more students and more individuals guided uh, in their career related decisions. And currently what I do beside that, I, uh, I am a, a consultant in training and I help corporates and business uh, professionals uh, in their business uh, competence so that the world would be a better place. Now enough talking about myself um, and I would, uh, I would love to introduce to you what we do in our profession so that it can be inspiring to you because I heard that you are uh, on your way to develop this curriculum or this strategy for assisting your students. So please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. Once I finish, I would love to answer all your questions. Um, in my uh, 10 plus years of expertise, um, I knew that back in the 50s, if you remember, the career choice was a once in a lifetime event. So for example, if you start studying science and you join the faculty of medicine, you graduate to become a physician, and then you make more studies to be a physician and to be a more experienced physician and that's it. And the concept of career shift was like uh, completely insane. And this is why we always represent it like uh, a train with one destination. But then after 20 years uh, or more, it became like a series of events so that people stay in one career for some time and then they drop off the that career and choose another one. So um, it was seen as a series of events. But again, the person would stay for some time in each uh, career. And I believe that now you guys can start relating to how you see your careers. So for example, um, some of our colleagues now deny the idea of uh, shifting the career from, for example, pharmacy to the field of training, which is my story. But now, if we look at the career choice, it's like this, uh, what we call the beach buggy, which is an ongoing process and every single day you wake up, I wouldn't say questioning your career choice, but considering other career choices. So for example, uh, for you guys, uh, maybe you thought of having your own business or uh, leaving the academia for uh, opening your uh, shop, for example, or whatever. So I just want to see a show of hands if any of you considered this career shift and leaving the academia. Anyone? I can see you, by the way, so feel free to raise your hands. 
Okay, very loyal academic people. Perfect. So um, during my my around 12 years of, uh, of working with adults and employees, I have seen a lot. A lot of people uh, wanted to change their corporates to work in different organizations. A lot more wanted to shift completely from the field they are experienced in to a totally different field. And I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of the number of, uh, of pharmacists who are now not working in pharmacy. And even one of my, uh, my close friends is now working in the real estate. So of course it's, it's completely different and the destination is often unknown. So if we are to ask ourselves, what is the ultimate career? And let's go theoretically first before going um, practically. So I want you to take a moment and, and I think you all have some uh, papers. So I want you to just jot down a few words. What is the ideal career for you? Is it the one that um, guarantees stable income? Is it the one that is close to your uh, home, maybe? Or the one with advancement? So please, please just write a few words on, on your sheets of paper. I can see you, so <laughs> yeah. Well, I know it's not an easy question because a lot of people do not know what an ideal career is. And even worse, some people think that work is, cannot be, cannot be ultimate, cannot be something nice. So what we do here is putting this ultimate career equation in front of you, which is the summation of what I love to call the two S, which are the success and satisfaction. Imagine that you are doing the thing that you are very successful at and you love it very much that you are satisfied and even delighted when you do it. So by combining these two aspects, we reach the ultimate career. Now, the question is, how do we do that? Is it even possible? So again, please show me, uh, give me a show of hand if you believe that you can achieve the ultimate career or the combination of success and satisfaction. Okay, guys, do you consider yourself successful? Yes? No? Okay, do you consider yourself satisfied at work? I think you can see yourselves. So um, I'm, I'm viewing just an angle of the, the lecture hall. So I hope to see someone who is really successful or considering themselves successful in their career. Okay, um, nobody? Yes, finally, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now someone who is successful, thank you, Dr. Iman. And okay, does any one of you sees themselves as both successful and satisfied with what they do? Sh show me your hands. No, ah, uh -huh. finally, thank you, thank you. Thank you, perfect. So. How do we achieve this? And how do we uh, help our students to achieve this ultimate uh, career equation? This is what I'll be talking about. Thank you, Iman, for uh, showing up on camera. So feel free to go back to your seat. Now, in our process, we uh, follow what we call a, the career diamond model. And from this specific point, I want you all to pay attention because this is the exact process that we use with, with our students. Your objective as career advisors is to guide your students from the current status or the point they are at at, the, at this moment, which let's call it a point A, to guide them to point B, which is the desired uh, state or desired situation or the desired career. So how do we do that? Like you see, we start with what we call the awareness. And by awareness, we mean that we assist the student to understand who they are, 
what they want to do, what they can do, and what they really love to do. So we start with the first part, which is expanding the self-awareness so that the student un fully understand their potential and fully understand even their interests and their desires and their passions. And after we do that, we move on to expanding the world of work. So we assist the student to explore what are the available options in the market. And I remember when I was at college, and that was back in 2008, uh, the only options I saw in front of myself as a pharmacy student were either to, to go for the academia and I have to study really hard to be accepted in the academia, so good for you everyone, or to work in uh, the pharmaceutical sales. And for me that was not an option because my family wouldn't allow me to work in this uh, field, so it felt like I had no options. But what we do here with our students is that we expand the, uh, the information they have uh, for their occupation and the world of work and the available jobs in the market. And after this expansion, like you see, there are too many pieces of information uh, imposed to the student. So now it's time to start to conclude or to exclude some of the options in order to reach the uh, final decision. Now allow me everyone to take you uh, in this journey of self-awareness. Um, and I would highly uh, recommend and love that you apply whatever I'm going to say on yourselves. So in order to, um, to understand what self-awareness is, we use this uh, puzzle-like or four quadrant um, a matrix showing the pillars of uh, the career advising and these four pillars are the career values the motivated skills the job interest and the personality style indicator let's start with the career values and the career values are the measure of your satisfaction at work remember when i uh, i was talking about the ultimate career equation it had two words starting with S, success and satisfaction. So career values uh, is the part responsible for the satisfaction. Because um, when I asked you a few mo uh, moments ago to write um, why or what is the ultimate career for you guys, some people may have felt stuck. I don't know what the ultimate career is. Some other people maybe uh, have written things like um, high income or advancement or maybe fast pace. Whatever you wrote, imagine that you are working in, uh, in an environment or a career that grants you with these values. Can you imagine how beautiful it would be, how productive you would be doing your everyday work and let's imagine the other side. If none of the things that you appreciate and value in work is present in the environment you are in, you would always feel heavy to wake up in the morning and to go to your work. Do you agree? Yeah. So what we do here is we introduce a lot of um, career values and of course, this is in the process, so I'm just showing you uh, what we do. We actually introduce 50 plus values and we allow the student or the individual to select from these uh, values what, what really matters to them. And then we measure uh, how much of these values can be achieved in the profession they choose. So this is something I would highly recommend that every one of you do after this uh, seminar to think what makes your work environment ideal. If, uh, as I always tell my clients, if you had the genie out of the bottle, what would you ask them to grant in your career? Now moving on to the next part, which is the motivated skills. And here, this is a very interesting part because skills 
that we know are skills. But what does the word motivated mean? We actually classify skills into four different categories according to whether you like it, like the, doing the thing itself or not, and whether you are good at the thing or not. So um, if you allow me, I want to see you writing some few words about the skills that you currently have. I just need um, maybe just five skills. So uh, please start writing the skills you see in yourselves, maybe presentation skills, maybe content development, maybe um, dealing with the students, maybe uh, research. Yeah. Dr. Ahmed, I saw you uh, starting to write. Ah, excellent. Please continue doing that. <laughs> okay. And whoever finishes writing five skills, just raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I see a hand raised? I'm not sure. I think you, you can see the side of the lecture hall that I see, so. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Anyone, anyone is done with at least five skills? Yeah, just show me your hand. Okay, perfect, okay. So now I want you guys to look at those skills that you have just written. Do you like them all in the same way? Can you imagine yourself doing these skills every day and still feeling satisfied? So the first thing that we do is to classify the, uh, the skills that we have in terms of whether we enjoy doing them or not. So uh, I will explain the matrix and, and you are free to do that um, after the seminar, but you can see that, okay, I love uh, research but I don't really love um, lecturing. Maybe I love um, being in, in classroom, but I do not really enjoy developing the PowerPoint for the lecture, maybe. So after classifying them according to uh, whether we enjoy them or not, we start classifying them according to the level of proficiency that we have. Do you see yourself competent and highly proficient in this specific skill or you believe that you lack the desired level. And here I'm not saying that you are not good at this, but you lack the desired level that you want to have for yourself. After doing this exercise, you'll see that we have, according to the classification I've said, we have four quadrants. Here I'm doing this extra line for the like, uh, and I'll tell you why I do that later on. But for now, you will have some skills that you enjoy using very much and you are very proficient and very competent at. Let me tell you, if you work with these skills, I can guarantee that you are successful and satisfied because these are the motivated skills. So whoever followed the exercise with me, imagine that you are doing the things that you have put in this quadrant. I can assure that your workplace is the best ever. And I have seen people telling me that this is the best job I ever had. Why? Simply because they are using their motivated skills. Okay, so for uh, the second part, which, uh, which are the skills that you enjoy, however, you lack the desired level. This is what we call the areas of development. So now if you are working with your students uh, and uh, you are qualifying them, for example, to work in the academia and they love the research, but they do not really know how to do it very well. So these are the skills that they enjoy very much, but still lack the desired level. And this is what we consider the areas of development. So you can actually develop a plan for them to work on because if they get the proficiency of the skills in this area, it will move to the motivated skills area. And accordingly, they'll be successful and satisfied. And quickly, let, uh, let me move to the third part, which is the skills that you dislike using, but still you are competent. So for example, um, I, 
I don't like the equations in the Excel very much. They are too complicated for me. But I know how to do them. I know how to, uh, um, to research and create this equation and make the calculations and everything. But it feels like it drains me a lot. And this is because these skills are what we call the burnt out skills. I know how to do them and I'm very competent, but I dislike using. Okay, so imagine yourself having a job that requires you to use the skills in this area maybe like 90% of time. Can you imagine what would happen to you? Huh, sad story. <laughs> yes, and for this specific part, we encourage our students to exclude these skills from their resume because maybe an employer would hire them only because of this skill. And of course, the skills that you neither uh, like using and you still lack the desired level would we go for a job requiring these skills of course not of course not and this is uh, what we do with uh, the skill set okay now let's move to the third pillar and the thing that i love the most and uh, it is one of the most beneficial things that you can do with your students which is the job interest and here we do not talk about specific jobs Rather, we talk about the components of the jobs. And there is the scientist called Joan Holland. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, Google their name. Uh, so Joan Holland created uh, the assessment that is called the RIASIC. And he got all the jobs in the world and tried to classify them according to these six categories where the, the name RIASIC comes from. So, for example, some people like doing things with their own hand and uh, feeling the tools in their hand while others enjoy so much working with ambiguity and uh, knowledge and research and, and analysis this is what we call the investigative other people would love the artistic part and i believe that some of you now can relate uh, for the artistic people those who love to have colors in everything they do or to um, maybe uh, do things differently and those what we call the creators or the artistic people and then the social people who love interacting with others and helping them and the enterprising uh, those we call the uh, the young managers or the young leaders because even when they are still at college they want to have their own business they have this entrepreneurial spirit and they do not want to be uh, committed to a corporate world and and they are very, uh, they're highly risk takers, which we call the enterprising or the persuaders, and the other people who love having things in a conventional way, having a clear system, one plus one equals two, I do not want to deal with ambiguity and so on. Of course, there is an assessment and you can um, find a simplified form online. If you type the RIASIC assessment, you can find it. And you can uh, yourselves figure out uh, your. And here, can you imagine you are aligned with your interest? So, for example, I would assume that you, as faculty members, you should love the investigative part because it's it's based on research and getting new information every day. But still, you have to have some social aspect because you are dealing with students. And I know that they are uh, not angels <laughs> and they drive us crazy sometimes. So you have to have this social aspect. But again, if you feel that you are tired of the lack of system and you are always complaining, then probably you are the organizer person. And an important note to say here, it is not about comments. It is about preference. What do I mean with that? I mean that uh, most of you can do things that they are not comfortable with. And I was giving uh, an example the other day that as a faculty member, I enjoy research, but I hate standing uh, in class in front of people. I get tensed, I get worried, but by time I learned how to do it. But if I had the choice, 
I would choose not to do it. Now the, uh, the fourth and the last pillar, which is the personality style. And again, and I have to uh, stress here that the personality style affects preference and not competence because some of the jobs that we face today, um, we can see that some people are talented and they know how to do it. And other people who are very good academically do not know how to do it simply because their personality style is not aligned. So again, for the personality style, of course, it's ideal if uh, the job that you do is aligned with your personality style as preference and not uh, competence. Now, after putting all these four aspects together, you can see that now you are ready to move on with your student to the part of the market exploration and develop an action plan. The action plan should include the milestones that you um, help your student decide. And I'm, I'm saying help your students decide because you are not the one who decides for them. You just guide them and help them explore the different options in front of them. So you put your milestones or the milestones in, uh, in the how part, and then you specify the time and duration they should be working on that specific milestone. And you ask them who in your network can uh, assist you get this uh, action step done. And after that, your student is ready to move on either during the college time or even after graduation. Now the, the journey with the student is, is done and they are, um, they are good to go. And of course, they have the, uh, the ability to return back to you if they want uh, more guidance, but having an action plan that is timed and very specific would definitely help them move forward. Now, going back to you uh, uh, as advisors, what are the skills that I need in order to be able to provide my student with this? This is what we call the competencies. So in order to be competent enough to help your student, uh, the NCDA or the National Career Development Association, uh, uh, which is the biggest career dedicated association in the United States, um, specify 12 competencies that you need to work on. And these competencies are what we teach uh, the students in, in the program, how to help, how to listen, how to empathize. And this is what we call the helping skills. And then how to uh, find the labor market information and what resources you can introduce to the student in order to uh, assist them make the decision. And another part is the assessment. What are the available assessments and how to use them, how to interpret uh, and guide uh, the student uh, with the results. And of course, things like dealing with diverse populations or maybe, uh, uh, and of course, with the diverse population, we talk about different cultures and we talk about uh, students with disabilities as well. And uh, part of the program for the um, justice involved people. Uh, and of course, we talk about the theories and the career development models that we use, as well as the employability skills. And of course, we cannot ignore the role of technology in, uh, in the process. And um, let me share with you some of the things that we, um, that I work together, and I hope this part inspires you. The first thing is qualifying counselors according to the NCDA um, curriculum. And this is what I'm actually doing with uh, one of the universities in, in Qatar. Actually, I'm doing this with the Ministry of Education and Higher Education uh, is to qualify counselors for this, as well as uh, developing the counseling protocol. So I teach you or I, uh, I share with you the journey or the strategy or the protocol that we use uh, in order to get our students from point A to point B, or even, and this is actually one of my dreams, and uh, I would love that uh, the Gulf Medical University take this as an initiative, uh, maybe in the Arab world, which is building a database of jobs or a directory of jobs, and we can start with pharmacy, 
of course, because I'm biased to pharmacy and because um, uh, Dr. Al Abd and Dr. Al Abed are here. So um, imagine having a database of jobs where every student can, after identifying their interests and values, can just put on some sort of uh, 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 software or an interface, and then they, uh, they come up with the options that they have. And actually, there is something like this in the United States called Occupational Network or ONET. If you search uh, now on the ONET, you'll find that it's a huge directory of jobs where students can just type their interests and uh, some of the other requirements, and then the screen shows them all the available options and what educational level they should seek if they want to get this specific job. And by that, I finish my presentation. Thank you for bearing with me this amount of time. I'm open to questions, and these are my uh, contact information. I would love that we stay in touch. Feel free to, um, to email me or find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. And um, for the QR code, uh, Dr. Labed, please feel free to, um, to instruct the audience uh, regarding this QR. Thank you very much, Dr. Alia, for this inspiring uh, session. You give us a new perspective. Uh, and a lot of points that we can uh, implement and uh, work to improve our current uh, career development. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the, um, the audience here? No questions. <laughs> well, I hope that that tells that everything was clear. Yes. Not that you guys are not interested. I hope so. Yes, it's, it's raising, raising questions, questions right? Yeah, yes. Uh, Finally. Mm. Yeah, it is a very inspiring. We have questions yeah. from Dr. Yeah. Ahmed Jabbar. Can you give the mic? Where is my? Can you hear him? Can you hear me? Dr. Uh, yes, but it's uh, it's a bit far. So please raise your voice. But I cannot see you. I would love to see you while uh, asking the question. Okay, I will use my voice. So, uh, just a, a thought that came to my mind do you think it would be uh, much better to have a career coach dedicated for student service and dedicated for the career advising for, for, for coaching our students uh, rather than having faculty members doing this? Or do you think that a faculty member could really get to that sort of the training to, to act in a career course? Ah, I love this question. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for asking. So um, I will rephrase just to make sure that I got it right. So you're asking whether it's better to have a dedicated counselor for this uh, job or to uh, empower the faculty members with the knowledge and the know-how to do it. Ideally, ideally is to have a career center in the university. And this is what we did uh, in uh, one of the biggest universities here in Egypt, which is Ain Shams University, my, uh, my university, and of course, Dr. Imans, and I believe Dr. Ahmed as well, Dr. Labd. So uh, what we did is to have qualified calibers from the career advising aspect. And they work together with the faculty members who are, of course, the technical uh, uh, professors or the technical know-how people, the experts, they work together in order to develop the ideal or the ultimate uh, service to the students. But do we have the luxury to do this? You guys are to decide, but of course, it's very important for you, Dr. Ahmed and, and the other faculty members to have the basic skills, because I believe that part of your role in inspiring your students is to guide them to the right decision. So. Again, to answer your question very precisely, ideally, we have to have dedicated people. But uh, this does not mean that the other option will not work. So I hope this answers your question. Any other questions? Uh, okay, Mr. Samira, yes, please. Yes, would you come, please? Yes. I 
I love how the camera just moves with, uh, with Dr. Samira. Excellent job for the one who is holding the camera. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Alia. Um, it was an, an inspiring seminar we had today. Um, I just want to ask a question because uh, I have been dealing with mentorship um, in my previous experience. And what I faced is um, the most challenging thing is assessing the outcome. Would you yes. like to share with us? How would we set our core values and how would we see that our career advising is successful? Thank you. Um, okay, uh, don't go, don't go, Dr. Samir, please. Uh, so the question is, how do we assess the, um, the ROI of our efforts, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, in, in your previous experience, you worked as a mentor in university settings or outside the university? In the university setting for bachelor of pharmacy students. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, perfect. So um, uh, I do understand the question, so feel free to, uh, to go back to your seat if you okay. want. Okay, so how do we measure the return on investment? Of course, there is an investment in terms of time, in terms of uh, effort, and of course, in terms of money. Uh, how do we evaluate this? First of all, by monitoring the progress of students, how they, um, they acquire the knowledge needed for, uh, for the job they aspire to. And we follow the alumni, uh, whether they, uh, they get the jobs that they wanted or not. And of course, for, uh, for graduates, sometimes uh, uh, Dr. Samira, they do not, uh, or they are not able to get jobs. So uh, one of the KPIs or the ROI uh, is that this person gets a job and stays in the job for more than six months. And of course, you can have these kind of follow-up sessions with the students to, or let me say with the graduates, to see how they are doing and, um, and to review their progress. And let me tell you one of the things that I love the most about this profession is when, uh, when um, a graduate comes to you and tells you, you changed my life. So yes, career is a very important aspect of our lives. And you can, uh, I believe you can tell whether someone is both successful and satisfied or not. So I hope this answers your question, Dr. Samir. And thank you for asking. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arya. For our um, faculty here, would you please scan the QR code for a survey and feedback from your phone? Once you scan it, you will receive a link for a survey. To please uh, do the survey, scan the QR code. Uh, and then I, if I would like to summarize Dr. Alia, or uh, while we're talking, I have like a platform or what, uh, what's the possible uh, strategies. For example, we can work with a faculty on the, uh, to, uh, to assess their competencies and the evaluations according to the platform and improve this and choose the talent from the faculty who can be advisors. And yes. uh, with the student, I can see that we are we, we should or plan or to plan to work with the students on the other side to help them put a really criteria and to help them to make to evaluate themselves and know their self and know their skills according to the platform yes. that you that you set to choose and do a plan. Uh, and it is really interesting the idea of building the database for them for the jobs. This will be really like we can have a, a tool for them to help the students yes. what you what you can do where to go and and so on yes. so um, this we are having amazing idea from just uh, one session yes yes Thank i you. i love i love all the notes that you took uh, dr iman uh, and yes i told you it's it's one of my dreams to uh, mm -hmm. to provide such a thing to students so definitely i would love to assist you in the process if you are considering uh, it for their future. Thank you. thank you very much, Dr. Alia. Thank you very much. Uh, let's please thank Dr. Alia for this amazing, uh, inspiring session. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure uh, being thank with you. Thank you. Thank and please you. feel free to communicate with me for whatever thing that you want. I would love to see to hear back from you. Until we meet. <laughs> yes, until we meet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.